Ladies and gentlemen, I've got something very special for you today. I'm super excited for this video. Today, I am going to get to the bottom of something. Can three Magnus Carlsen brains put together defeat Stockfish 16, which is the most powerful chess AI on the planet? Now, it could get more powerful if I also had a massive computer server space here and all that good stuff, but it is the most powerful chess computer even on a web browser. Now, I have no access to Magnus Carlsen, let alone three Magnus Carlsons. We haven't figured out how to clone them yet, and as far as we know, he doesn't have any twins. So instead, I will be using the Magni Chessbot that was created this month on chess.com, where I can only imagine it has a playing personality and brain power and capacity mentally of three Magnus Carlsons. I have two games for you. They're so cool. It's so cool to see these AI titans fight against each other. A lot of you like AI content. Do let me know in the comments if you do, by the way, because every time I ask, I always see people commenting. Because right now, YouTube comments are all like, Levy never fails to never fail to never fail, and Levy never fails. You know, like it, It's just all like teenage memes. But I, I do like to hear feedback from kids, adults, seniors. Like I really enjoy this type of stuff. And I have two unbelievable games for you today. So game number one, Stockfish began with uh, D4. And the Magni bots have an ELO of 9999 because their actual ELO is impossible ELO and chess.com doesn't let me customize the field with words. It only lets me put numbers. So I put 9999. D4, D5, Knight F3, Knight F6, and we have a Queen's Gambit because Stockfish really likes Queen's Gambit. It also likes C4, Knight F3 systems. I don't think it likes E4 as much. Um, and the Magni here play the Slav defense. There's no such thing as the Scandinavian variation here. There is the Scandinavian defense, but that's of course E4. So they play, you know, they play the Slav. And then they surprise me by playing not the semi-Slav, which is very, very good, uh, not Bishop F5, which is the mainline Slav, but A6. This has multiple names. I do believe it's called Chelyabinsk or the, um, oh, it has another name that I'm forgetting. Anyway. A6 Slav, and the idea is to play B5. The other idea is to take the pawn and go here. And generally nowadays, engines play E3 to try to take back with the bishop quickly, uh, or they take and basically say, well, now we're playing an exchange, but you have this dumb move A6. Yeah, Stockfish 16 plays G3. Um, Web-based Stockfish says, take my pawn. Let's play, I'm, I'm gonna give up my pawn completely. Not only am I gonna give up my pawn, I'm, I have no intention of winning it back with the bishop, none whatsoever. Now, the Magni take the challenge. They take on C4. The opening stage is very interesting for bots because normally they come with opening books. So when AI plays against AI, you pre-program them to play like certain amount of moves. I let the bot decide like on whatever depth it wanted. Bishop G2, this has all been played before and basically White just says you can have the pawn. What do I get for the pawn? I get long-term pressure on this massive diagonal. I can always play knight e5 and try to win the pawn back. And another way that I'll restrict you from playing b5 is I'll play a4 if you let me which is why frequently bots will go b5, but then they weaken this, and this can be very annoying to defend, and then white will play like b3, and there's, there's actually lines where, where white just like, just gets a position like this, just a full pawn down, but a lot of pressure, and black's position is very difficult to dig out of. So instead of that, the Magni play knight bd7, which stops knight e5, and so instead of that, Stockfish takes this approach and says, well, you know what? Middle finger, I, I mean, uh, pointer finger, pointer, pointer, po pointer finger, pointer, pointer finger. We have kids watching. To the Magni bot, I'm pointing at the B5 square. You can't play B5 anymore. You can't play B5 because you're going to open up that diagonal. You're also, you can't take like this. And so the Magni play A5 and they say, well, at least I won control of B4 completely. I can put pieces there. You can't put anything on B5 like a knight. And by the way, for the record, Stockfish has no intention whatsoever of winning the pawn back for now, which I find hilarious. A lot of moves tie for first here, like e4 is good, bishop g5, just developing as much as possible, bishop g5. And the idea of bishop g5, for the record, is not really to put pp on the pp. Like, there, if I can jump the pawn there, that would be great. The idea is to, is to take the knight. Take the knight, black can take back a variety of different ways, and then just play like e3. Just basically put a bunch of pawns on dark squares, no longer having a dark squared bishop. Maybe advance, but knight d2, queen e2, win the pawn back, utilize the long... Like, look at black's light squared bishop, right? The computer's trying to take a long-term approach here, and it doesn't mind 
kind of traditional nature of you shouldn't trade a bishop for a knight because Gotham said it in a YouTube video because if the computer could have it its way, it would be the one with four and a half million subscribers. So bishop g5 is played. The Magni put the bishop on b4, justifying their plan. And Stockfish goes knight to e4, which does put pp on the pp, but more than anything else, it opens up the c file. And you basically render this bishop targetless, and then you're going to try to win the pawn back and finally claim some sort of advantage. The Magni here say it's about damn time you do something with that bishop. The computer takes with the knight and then brings the bishop back. Now you might say, well, didn't you just say this was going to happen? Yeah, but it didn't want to trade too much, I guess. I guess Stockfish didn't want to create this massive imbalance, potential problems for itself on the king side. So it just goes back and says, all right, let's trade. Knight e5, queen c2. I will slowly win my pawns back. You still have a stupid bishop. The Magni now play a mistake um, in the eyes of Stockfish. Knight e4, which is an overextension. Stockfish doesn't like the fact that this knight is bouncing around so much. One, two, three. It's probably going to have to go back as well. Uh, the computer here, and by the computer, I mean, of course, the god of computer chess, Stockfish, just thought castling was fine. And if you're going to move the knight, it also like knight d5. And if e4, well, then I'm blocking my own bishop and knight f6 is good. And if e5, well, now the knight just lives here forever and black is completely fine. So it's actually interesting how in this position, the rather, this position, this is good for white, but if the pawn is on e5, it's bad for white, which is fascinating, right? Very, very fascinating. Very interesting. So bishop d2, knight e4, takes, takes, and now Stockfish says, all right, it's time to get my pawn back, knight e5, and, uh, qu okay, queen d2, interesting. Not queen c2, which virtually guarantees the capture, no. Actually, this position is not deemed that much better because black is completely solid. It's very difficult to break through the black position. Instead of that, Stockfish goes queen d2, which is a smokescreen. Queen d2 is a smokescreen targeting this pawn, forcing a reaction out of black. And, and, and black, if they defend that pawn, will now have to deal with this. The computer prefers to put a rook on c4 instead of a queen. It wants to play rook c1, at which point there is pressure. There is considerable pressure on the b pawn, and it's a big problem. So now by playing this, Stockfish baits the Magni into a reaction. And basically Stockfish is like, well, you, uh, Magni are like, well, you missed your chance to take. So now your knight is going to have to wander into our territory and look stupid. Stockfish says, stupid, stupid. Who's going to look stupid? You, bozos. Yeah, plural, by the way, plural for leaving those pieces on the board, which is uh, exactly that way. And now I'm not even going to take this. I'm going to attack your king because you weakened your king. The Magni wanted to have a weaker king so that white would not take those pawns back. But that was really bad. At this point, the Magni started saying some really hilarious stuff. Um, so king f7, knight f4, they played e5. And then when Stockfish took and they took back, they said two out of three Magni have voted to take. I, I wonder who the dissenting one was. Now Stockfish finds a beautiful idea. Rather than stepping back with the knight or going here and getting trapped, in this position, Stockfish plays queen takes pawn. That's a problem. If it can win its pawn back like that, it's, it's, it's a serious issue. Because if pawn takes rook d1 and you just, you use this pin. If the queen trade is offered, you don't accept, you, you go bully this king because the magni weakened the king. So queen b4, okay? The magni now needs to go queen e7 and defend themselves, but white is building the pressure. White is building the pressure. There are pawn targets all over the board. This is a very weak and isolated pawn. The king slides back to g8. Now Stockfish starts building up the pressure. Rook d7, looking to move the knight and trade the queen. Stockfish knows that. And at this point, the, the Magni say, together we have over 60 world championships combined. Knight c3, knight f7. You may wonder, why did Stockfish go here, but not double the rooks? It wants the rook on the F file. You know why it wants the rook on the F file? Because it knew this was going to happen. And now F4, and now we see we wanted the rook on the F file. Trying to open up the position. But the Magni are very close to equalizing the game. They're actually doing a really, really, really good job. Now we double the rooks, now we take. Rook Knight Bishop versus Rook Knight Bishop. Imbalanced pawn structure. The way you win a same color bishop endgame is you have your pawns complement your bishop. Nice hat. 
your muscles look really big, I really like your car, etc. G6, they played G6 and they said, we have unanimously chosen the best move. And by the way, according to Stockfish, yeah, 0 0.08. So they're talking trash correctly. Bishop f1, bishop e6, stockfish expands on the dark squares. Compliment the bishop actually means put pawns on the opposite color of the bishop. So your bishop controls light squares, your dark squares are controlled by the pawns. At this point, the magnets play h5 and they up the trash talk. They say the magni would all beat easily any other chess player in a fight. Because there's three of us. Yeah, can't, honestly, understandable. Have a nice day. F5. Look at that idea. This is such a deep idea by Stockfish. Stockfish gives up the pawn on f5 to win the pawn on c4. It does that because it's its only winning chance. You might say, how? How is that the only winning chance? Well, these pawns are going to be frozen on light squares. So the bishop always has a threat to sneak in. That pawn is now frozen on a light square. h4 was designed to play h5. I don't think Magnus Carlsen would ever play the move h5 in one of his own games because that pawn is a liability in all endgames because it's on the same color as the white bishop. It's also on the same color as the dark bishop, uh, as black bishop, but that's going to be the defending side. White is going to be attacking. So now look at this. Now, now we pop back. We defend. Apparently, king g6 is a bad move. Apparently, it's better to go king h6. If you ask me to explain this to you, I can't. I don't understand. I think the king here is a bit smushed. Maybe here it's out of the way. More room to move. But at this point, this was the first mistake the Magni made. And Stockfish immediately went, uh-oh, I'm better. B4. I'm happy to trade the rooks. A5. All pawns are on dark squares. Three pawns are on light squares. White is now, look at the advantage ballooning. A couple of moves ago, it was borderline dead equal. The move h5 started the problems. King g7, king g6, slightly inaccurate endgame play. And actually, the rook trade is probably losing. It's a simplification that Stockfish can see 20, 40, 30, 40 ply ahead, and whatever the Magni are programmed to can't, which is crazy. a5. And now, Stockfish brings its king, and this is the fatal mistake. Bishop c2. The computer thinks that the bishop should stay back here. And the knight can dance in the middle. The bishop can go back and forth. But when you overextend, now we have bishop f3. And the knight comes in. And Stockfish is going to get those pawns. These pawns are a massive problem. And the knight can come here and win this. In fact, it does for the magni. But it's too little too late. Because the king is coming. If you play knight to a6, which looks like a really nice move, I'm just going to go king e4. I don't care about that pawn because I'm still constantly threatening. And look at this winning idea. So there's an idea here that's hidden. It's the outside pass pawn walking past the blockade because you sacrifice the bishop and you clear out the defense. Very sneaky idea. It looks like there's no way through, but there is. And that is the way Stockfish wins game one. It threatens enough problems and then it wins that weak pawn, and it's got a 2 on nothing. It's got a 2 on nothing advantage. So you go up the board, you create a blockade with your bishop, and you slowly escort these pawns to a spot where the king has no choice but to go address them. g6, h5. Now the king is there. Now it's this, this, and this versus the rest of the black position. The black king is completely stuck. It has to play defense so you can bring the king up the board. Black is in Zugzwang. If black goes king f6... You play h6 and h7. That's it. Black is completely lost at that point. If black plays king here, you take a little walk around. That's what you do. Take a little walk around. Threaten to promote the pawns. Threaten to go to e6. You go here. Take the pawn. Get over there. Now, you might even find a way to lose this pawn, but it won't matter because by the time the knight goes there, these pawns are too advanced. And that's exactly how the computer wins this game. Stockfish, look at this. Like the king walks in like the Terminator. It's what the, look, king e3. King e4, king e5, king d6, king c7, I'll do it myself. Giving up the bishop, look at this, giving up the bishop, because you can't stop me. A beautiful first game, and uh, Stockfish methodically pries apart the defenses, forces the king to the edge, king f6, king f7, black again in a Zugzwang, knight g7. You could play knight f4, but then I'm going to go here. That's mate, if you move the knight, if you move the king, 
That's mate. So it's game over. King F7, Knight G7. What a game. Stockfish beats the Magni at their own strength, which is the end game. Crazy. Crazy, because the Magni kept in there. It was a very interesting game. I mean, Stockfish was applying pressure the whole game, playing that interesting uh, G3 Slav type of thing, putting the bishop on G2. If you want to ever add like a... If, if any of you are intermediate or advanced, then you can actually put these types of openings to the test and your opponents are not, you know, having violent diarrhea in the first 10 moves and moving their queen around and playing stupid gambits. Because that's what chess is below like 1500 rapid. You can't, you know, you show up to a game after studying an opening, somebody puts all their pawns on the sixth rank, you lose, you want to throw your phone out of a window. But at an advanced level, you know, G3 systems in queen's pawn openings are really tough to play against. So consider adding them. This game though, insanity. Absolutely insane game. I want to look at it from Stockfish's standpoint because I find it actually just more, more terrifying. This game was unbelievable. So the Magni started game number two with a Trumpowski, which really surprised me because if I don't think any computer will play the Trumpowski, okay? Um, now, G6. Uh, sorry, I, I have a... I'm going to break the fourth wall here. I have sticky notes on the, like, I have my thing where I'm recording, but then, and I'm going to tell you the funny things that the Magni said in this game, and one of them happened on the move G6. G6 was not played there. I just read the move out. Like, you know when that happens? Like, you're walking, you see something, and you're, like, having a conversation, and you're like, yeah, you know, I really like that tomato! Because you, like, saw a tomato, or, what you know, you meant to say, like, I really like that thing, and then you, you just slide it into your sentence. That's called something. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's called. It's, like, the same phenomenon. It's not the same phenomenon, but it's, like, you look at a word for too long, and then it starts looking incorrect. Anyway, another very interesting thing. They play knight c3. I play this with white. This is a system where you put your queen like this, and it's very aggressive, and you try to castle long. c5 is a very interesting line. Knight c3, super interesting. Um, so they start immediately attacking Stockfish, which is super funny. Stockfish plays e6, e4, knight f3, and now they're just going to go long castle and, and, and attack. Now, Stockfish here can strike back. It can already begin creating counterplay, but it plays d6. Very cagey approach. The position really resembles a... Um, a classical Sicilian after knight c3, knight here, bishop g5, this is called the rouser, and then, you know, it basically looks like this. And, and black puts these bishops behind these pawns, a6, a6, rook c8, and it looks like this. Well, the position we get in the game kind of looks like that. It's got a very similar structure, where it looks like e4, c5, and it looks like kind of a Sicilian, because black doesn't have a c-pawn. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't look that different, and now we have Long Castle, and when you try to attack Stockfish, sometimes it stubbornly defends itself, and sometimes it says, you want to fight, you got to fight. That's what we're going to do. We, we got to fight. It says, I'm not going to castle, because I see what you want. And sometimes in these positions, it's actually better for Black to keep the king in the center. It's the fascinating thing about the Sicilian defense. There's some variations. The king hiding behind its own pawns is safer than going somewhere, because sometimes if you castle somewhere... And then you try to like fight back, let's say h6. Uh, well, I guess I just castle. Let's say like bishop d3, h6. You're gonna lose. Like you'll just get checkmated. And positions in the balance because there's some absurd ways to defend the, you know yourself. But this is nobody wants to play like this. So place queen a5. Now the magni shocked me. They didn't play king b1. They didn't play bishop d3. The magni sacrifice a pawn here, a full pawn to open up black's position. So they are taking the fight to stockfish. Now you can't take with the pawn apparently because bishop b5 is lethal. Get the knight, get the rook in the game. Sensing that they are under attack. Sorry, that they are, I, I keep mixing up who's who. Sensing that Stockfish is under attack, uh, it decides to trade pieces. So the more pieces that get traded, like knight for knight, the less chance Stockfish has of getting checkmated. Knight takes e5, now queen takes e5 not opening its own king, and when the check arrives, it doesn't offer a trade, Stockfish makes a conscious decision to move its king. And it's basically saying, y'all are trash, y'all attack is trash, good luck. I prefer to keep my pawns like this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna you, you wanna see an attack? You're gonna get an angry, angry AI coming your way. Look at the position though, castled king, Rooks on the files, bishop sniping, queen lurking, knight ready to go, all for one pawn? 
This is a terrifying position for Black, whose four of seven pieces are on the home rank, the eighth rank. Queen f5, f3, defending itself and ready to go g4, ready to get the queen and the bishop out of the way, and g4, h5, just trampolining these pawns forward. Stockfish plays h6, kicking out the bishop, the bishop goes. Now it plays a6, kicking out the bishop, because it's the only thing it can do. But what about bishop d3? The bishops are going back to reset for another wave of an attack. Fascinating stuff. The queen goes for a queen trade. Stockfish goes for a queen trade. Here was stuck behind, between all these moves. It's stuck between queen here, queen there, queen there. It really couldn't decide. It was all about balance. It offers a queen trade. If you're going to attack somebody in chess, you can't trade the queens. The queen goes back. And now Stockfish looks silly because it put its queen directly in the line of attack. Oh my God, what is it doing? I got news for you. It's not doing anything. Bishop d7. <laughs> It's like, come get me, you clowns. Come get me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. That was a great movie, by the way. I love Watchmen. Rook c8, b5. Like all of it, it, it actually thinks it's going to attack the Magni instead. So here comes h4. It could have played g4, it plays h4. Stockfish plays rook c8. <laughs> Completely unconcerned. A lot of moves are possible here. Like I thought about trading first. And it's all like within the same. It's about, you know, from, from equal to minus 0.1, minus 0.2, plays rook c8, and now it goes to a5. Directly into a discovered attack, which doesn't actually do anything because queen a2 is fatal. So queen a5, and now the magni play a preparatory move, which is king to b1. And now, now Stockfish has a major choice. At this point, it realized that white's attack is actually very powerful. Stockfishes are a little bit bad, sometimes a tiny bit bad at like the 3700 level of going, Oh, I see. Yeah, that, that might be a problem in 20 moves, especially with peace placements. Like sometimes it thinks a peace placement is fine, then it goes, oh, it could be problematic. If I had like Google computer uh, servers here, it would not, but you know, I got the browser. So instead of that, it plays d5, which is a really bold move. Instead of d5, it could have brought its queen back to the home square, which is deranged, like I can't even imagine. And then it basically will take Put the knight there and do this, cocoon, and say, I'm still a pawn up, you clown. I'm still a pawn up, but then f5 would have ripped the position open. Knight to d5 would have come in. You would have grabbed the bishop. You would have tried to put the bishop on the dark squares. It would have been crazy. But instead of that, Stockfish says, come checkmate me. d5, completely g, it, it just allows the pawn to come in, and then it plays knight e8. It plays knight e8, and the magnite push this pawn and say, all three Magni have evaluated this position as advantageous for white. Barely. How Black's position is not completely collapsing is beyond me. For any human, this is game over. Game over for Black. You take this, you open up your king. Look at that. I don't even have to take. I want my knight there. Unfortunately, there's no nonstop flight, so I'm going to have to fly boom, and then to Istanbul, and then to G6. But it's still winning. So instead of that, f6. The pawn is actually in white's way. White, the, white doesn't want the pawn there. White wants the open lines. But the knight is still going to go for the journey. He plays knight e2, and here the magni said, the magni cannot agree on a move. For good reason. Because here, f4 is good. Knight b5 is good. Uh, bishop f5. What the f What is that? Giving up the bishop to take on d5. And take on e7. Sacrificing the rook. There's so many good moves in this position. The Magni literally are beside themselves. They can't decide. Knight to e2 is played. The bishop... Oh my, I told you this game was absurd. The queen is hanging, but instead of moving it, Stockfish counterattacks. Because if you take the queen, there's no further damage. And if you take this, you attack the rook. If you want to survive an attack, trade the queens. But trade the queens intelligently. You go here trying to trade the queens. I kick you out. Incredible. Bishop c5, both queens slide out of danger. The attack continues to pour forward. Black's move in this position is unfindable for a human. Unfindable. Unfindable. Black's entire concept here is unfindable. The knight arrives, putting pressure on this and this. Any human here reinforces this. Any human. The best move in this position for black is to play h5. Now, you, if you had the attention span to survive 24 and a half minutes in this video, thank you. You're very appreciated. But now I'm going to really show you how beautiful 3700 ELO chess is. So we have this position. 
Black's king is stranded in the center of the board. This rook has no connection to the pieces. White is creating a very powerful attack where basically every piece is involved. And yet, the best move is to play pawn to h5. And the best move for black is to play pawn to h5. Because it prevents the knight from arriving on that square to perch and pressure. Yes, but Stockfish is preparing for the end game. Stockfish knows that in a distant world, it will survive the attack, it will neutralize White's initiative, it will trade a sufficient amount of pieces, and when its knight gets there or there, or the bishop goes there, that pawn will be a liability and f5 will be played. It's not just about the knight coming to h5, because there's going to be a situation also in the future where h5 is played and black can't get out. Black is suffering, trying to breathe, and there's going to be sacrificial ideas on the pawn when the knight moves and this pawn will be able to promote so it plays h5 which is so crazy and i'm telling you this because i'm from the future i'm telling you this because it might happen queen to h3 the mag knight put pressure knight to c7 rookie two, rookie one applying so much pressure bishop a3 is a checkmate threat the bishop goes back to defend itself e5 breaking open the center the queen is under attack bishop f5 counterattacking this bishop. The knight is hanging, but you can't take it. You can't take the knight because bishop d7, there's checkmate threats. So you go bishop b5. White's knight goes out of the way. It's 0-0-0, it, it's e, it's zero, 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 but it's so complicated. It's so complicated. Black's king is under massive pressure. White's king is under counterattack as well. The bishop goes to b4. What? What about knight takes? Yeah, then I take the rook. What about this? Well, then I take the knight. And it's still equal. White's attack is still so powerful because what is this guy doing? Black is basically playing without a rook. But instead of that, we have rook d1. All right. Now here, there's so many crazy lines. Oh my God. It's all around the same evaluation. White can go, black can go bishop c4 here, which Stockfish thought was bad after f4, e4, sacrifice. And look at this. Look at Stockfish thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh. And it's under too much pressure. You sacrifice material, but you open up all the lines. Bishop takes. Rook takes, the bishop drops back. White plays a4 for some reason. Because I guess you're trying to just take space away. And now black is lost. Black is lost because you can't get the rook into the game. So you are playing down a rook. Insanity. So instead of bishop c4, we have bishop e7. Now we have bishop d2 and bishop c4. Now we have a move that I can't even, I can't even begin to explain, which is this, again, a4 taking space away from black, maybe threatening to trap the bishop. Queen c6, Stockfish says, go ahead and, and trap my bishop. I wanted to trade it anyway. I wanted to get rid of the knight. What? Why would you want to get rid of the knight? What about the queen coming in here? Yeah, now Stockfish says, I'm attacking. B5, oh my, this is nuts. This is, who's gonna lose? It's like two heavyweights. A takes B5, knight takes B5. Now the mag knight play a move that is unfathomable to me unfathomable i think two powerful bishops two powerful rooks let's continue the attack no 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 no. the magni go for an end game they take the knight they take the knight they want to go for an end game and transfer in the queen so now the threat is rook takes pawn with the weakened king so you know where black moves king e8 the position here looks absolutely horrible for black black still can't get the pieces into the game but black might get a queen trade somehow Black survived. The house made of cement survived the, the big bad wolf blowing and blowing and blowing and blowing and it survived. F4, right? Trying to create E4. Now the best move there, this was the last chance for Stockfish. Stockfish thought Bishop A5 was strong for the Magni. And then after something like Rook D6, Rook D3, and maybe trying to transfer in like this, you can't really go D4 because now this is very powerful. F4, E4 worked in the past, but that was when the pawn was back there. So Stockfish found a series of moves here that would have weakened its position quite considerably and would have given some good chances to the Magni, but still you would have tried to trade the queens. And then there's this rook sacrifice, rook E5. Just straight up sacrificing a rook because of queen F7 mate. Insane, look at that. Just beautiful. F4 though, E4, we go to an end game. Queen trade. The Mag Knight finally win their pawn back. Finally. But look at this. This is so unbelievable. 
This is the 44th move of the game. 20 moves ago, Stockfish played h5 in the middle of a massive apocalyptic battle with its king and rook and knight all on the back rank. It played h5 because it had a feeling that 20 moves into the future, there was a hope. That is insane. And I got news for you, it gets even more insane than that because it wins the pawn. It chucks this, that, that, and king safety just for its pawn. It plays rook to h6, and this, this is insane. It plays rook to h6 to attack the pawn on g6. But what is its plan after rook b6, bishop g7? Its rook is trapped. And if it wanted to invest in the pawn, why didn't it just go here? Well, then there would have been this right away. And if you play h3 and try to run away, I go check. I will win your rook, bishop here, bishop here, h2, and then I have this, and I'm actually checkmating you in many lines. You're actually getting checkmated. And then this pawn is very strong as well. So instead of that, first stockfish goes here. And it goes there. Because now, it can push. It couldn't do it right away, because the bishop would have had to block. But by putting the rook up, it allows the rook to die. You've been... What does he say to Snape? Sorry, if, I, if mute now if you don't want Harry's Potter spoiled. You've been a good and faithful servant, Severus. But only I can live forever. H3, H2, and the difference is that the king can get out and the pawn is too slow. G7, H1 is a check. And then I stop the pawn. Watch as Stockfish performs gymnastics to escape. Rook B8, we would have gone king D7. Now you may wonder, what about queen? Queen C2 and bishop F6! That's the problem. It's, in, it's insanity. So rook B8 check would have led to king D7. Rook B7, king D6 or king E6. Rook C7. And maybe this is equal? Maybe there's a way to draw this? That's probably what the Magni should have done, but they blunder. The Magni blunder, which is, I, Magnus would never blunder here. So this is like clearly an AI that is just programmed to do some stupid stuff. It makes a queen and then it goes to this endgame of Rook and Bishop versus Queen. But it gets even more ridiculous. I think the Magni thought this was a draw. The Magni idea was to give up the Bishop for the pawn and make a draw, and what I mean by that is, let's say e2, bishop h4, e1, take, take, rook c4 is a draw. This is a draw. You may wonder why. Well, a queen can beat a rook, but I got news for you, a queen can't even beat a rook and a pawn sometimes. And two pawns is good enough, and three pawns is even better, because this is what we call a fortress. This is a defensive fortress. The rook is defended and creates an impregnable defense. Now, let's say white plays king b2, king e7, king a2, king f6, and black walks their king all the way to g4. You look at the eval, it's actually getting bigger, and then there's going to be an idea to sack the queen. So something like queen f4 or weakening the position, maybe, but it might be a draw. But guess what happens? For whatever reason, Stockfish makes a knight. It makes a knight because it assumed it would be taken. Magnite didn't take the knight! <laughs> they actually might have made a draw, but for some reason, see, if you make a queen, it's gonna take. But they didn't! The Magnite malfunctioned in the endgame and allowed the knight to survive because I guess they thought they, they, they just got some sort of weird horizon effect. The knight completely broke the AI. <laughs> and they're gonna lose! Of course they're gonna lose! There's a whole nother piece on the board. So black just black, you know, circles and circles and gets the knight in and finally picks up the bishop and gets the pawn. And this is winning because it's just the pass pawn. It's not, there's no defense. And um, Stockfish 16 advances, doesn't make a knight that time, surgically wins. What a weird set of games. I mean, that first one was a fascinating, you know, pawn sacrifice positional grind. This one was 
chaos. Stockfish accepted a monster attack for its opponent for the cost of a pawn, simplified the game down into an endgame, made a queen. It was probably still equal, but the Magni blundered in an endgame. And um, if you enjoyed this, you know, I'm happy to make these two play a, a 10 game match. It'd be fascinating to see if, you know, maybe the Magni can win, but Stockfish is the AI overlord. I mean, there is no denying it's so powerful. It does some crazy stuff. It takes crazy risk and it plays to the crowd. Um, hopefully you enjoyed because I really, really enjoyed these games and uh, I look forward to making some more. So Stockfish remains undefeated, undisputed for now. Get out of here.